Today, I'm trying something I've always wanted to do. Stop was pretty cool. I love cars and I've taken lots of photos of parked cars, but I have always wanted to try motorsport photography. Today is Drive Fest at the Canadian Tire Motorsport Park and I have a special guest who not only is super experienced and has a ton of great tips about motorsport photography, but he also knows all the best spots on the track. So we're gonna go with him today and learn how to take some absolute bangers on the track. What's up guys? Let's pretend like we're seeing each other for the yeah, first time. Let's go. So, Rich and Richard? Rich. Yeah, yeah Richard. Both Rich. Everyone. That's not going to get confusing. Basically, so we have these media passes, right? Which lets us get close to the track. But what Rich did is he talked to these guys, and now we have special permission to go. Where can we go? Directly beside the track. Like Directly beside the track. And like no one else has that yet, right? Today? No, sir. It's just us. We're the first ones. Rich is a professional motorsport photographer and he's shot on this specific track a million times. So he's going to show us the ropes. So this is what this special sort of access gets us. This is the racetrack. Uh, just right in front of us. Just chilling by the racetrack. <laughs> Now, I mainly shoot weddings and branding photography. There are a lot of transferable skills between types of photography. Having a good grasp of composition, your exposure triangle, focus, stuff like that is transferable across all types of photography. But each type of photography still has its own little tips and tricks that you don't just know because you know another type of photography. And that's what I'm hoping to learn from Rich today. One of the biggest elements of cool motorsport photography is the motion blur. You need your shutter speed low enough that you can get that cool blurry background when you take a panning photo, but you need it fast enough that you can actually track the car properly and get the car sharp. So the more skilled you are at following the car perfectly, the lower your shutter speed can be and the blurrier you can make your background. So having your camera settings, specifically your shutter speed locked in is super important here. So, Rich, talk to me about panning. What kind of camera settings are you using when you're shooting and you're whipping your camera around? So, if I want to get something like relatively easily, I'll start somewhere between 1 60th to 1 100th of a second. Then you turn image stabilization off. That way, when you're panning, it's not trying to like pick up any sort of stabilization because it'll end up giving you like blur that you're not wanting instead of just. As we're shooting, we're gonna to wanna to turn our image stabilization off so it's not giving us unwanted blur. The easiest way to do it, I find, is just set your, your focus point in the middle with AF expand and try to use, when you're first starting out, try to use both eyes, keep one to track the car and the other one actually looking through your, your camera. I, I like to set my feet up to finish in the, the way that I'm shooting. Say the cars are gonna end up on that side of me. I like to set up my feet facing that way, counter rotate. And that way when you end, you're like in the most stable point, right? So the entire way through, you're just recoiling your body back to where you started from. Let's give it a try. And uh, have some fun. Yeah. Now, because we're standing next to speeding cars, one of the most important things here is safety. Rich has some guidelines for most importantly, staying safe, but also making sure we don't get kicked off the track. Because if we get caught breaking the rules, one, we're putting ourselves at risk, but we're also forfeiting the privilege of being that close to the track. If you are gonna be doing that motorsports photography, you always wanna try and focus on your safety, right? Because it is a very dangerous sport. It's probably one of the more dangerous types of photography you can do. As a car is coming around a the corner, they can lose control, for instance, if I am shooting in this corner for like, and I know that a car is potentially going to crash exactly where I am because where I'm standing right now is where they would crash, I will plan my exit. I'll have one foot on the ground always. If you're even like if you're kneeling, I always have one foot on the ground so you can run away, know exactly where you're going to run to, and always run up track away from the car. So I really didn't think this through because I have my 24 to 70 on this camera and my 70 to 200 on this camera and I want to use both because I'm filming videos with this one, I'm taking photos with this one. I didn't bring any camera straps. I have camera straps. I own camera straps. They're sitting in my closet right now and not, so I'm just, I'm just hand holding. We're just dual wielding cameras today. <laughs> So 
So another thing Rich was just telling me is the importance of bad button. Back button focus. So when you have your focus set up to be your shutter button, as Rich was saying, when you take the photo and you press all the way down, for that time that you're pressing it all the way down, the camera stops focusing so you could lose focus of the car. Whereas if you have it set to back button focus, you can hold it and have it be focusing the whole time and it's separate from when you're actually taking the photos. Okay, so I have my camera settings locked in. Rich is giving me some pointers. How are my shots turning out? Well, my static shots, the ones where I'm not panning, are looking pretty decent. I'm trying to incorporate some foreground elements of the track into the shots and still use the rules of composition that I already know in order to make these photos look good. But I knew that wouldn't be too hard. The thing that I wanted to nail was the panning shots because that's where the real skill comes in. So. Did I nail it? Well, I'll let you be the judge, but I don't think I did too bad for my first time. I will say there is a big learning curve to holding your camera and lens and making sure that you can keep it steady while panning. As Rich said, turning image stabilization off on your lens can actually help you get a better shot, but it also means you're relying 100% on your shakiness and stability level to get that smooth, clean, sharp shot. This is a big part of motorsport photography that definitely takes a ton of practice. And when you compare Rich's panning shots to mine, the experience that Rich has is very obvious. And my images were better than they probably should have been because I had Rich there to give me some tips, show me the best places to go on the track, give me these pointers. Without him, my photos would have been far worse. I definitely would not have been able to get any of these photos without his help, so Rich, thank you for that. If you wanna check out Rich's stuff, I am linking his Instagram in the description. He really has some bangers. There you go. Thank you. Check out our helmets, eh? Looking good. Like my hair net? You guys getting belts on? Yeah. Everybody's good, okay? This is for you to hold on to if you need to, okay? I'll Great. Man, I don't know if the video captured how fast that felt, but that was pretty cool. So overall on a difficulty scale, I would say motorsport photography on a scale of one to 10 is probably like an eight out of 10 difficulty. Because not only do you need to be affluent with your camera and know your settings like the back of your hand, but this is fast paced. You need to know the best places to be on the track and you need to have that physical skill of panning your shots properly and tracking the car perfectly. And you need to understand all the safety measures before you even begin. So definitely it's it's a challenging one, but I had a ton of fun. I learned a lot and I think I got some cool shots. This is a good example of no matter how long you've been shooting photos and practicing photography, there's always something new you can learn. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, subscribe. If you wanna see more cool stuff like this, you can also check me out on Instagram, TikTok, that kind of stuff I post there pretty often. Also, if you're interested in any of the gear I use on a regular basis, affiliate links are down below if you wanna check that out. But thank you guys for watching. I will catch you in the next one.